Those who regard lying vanities forsake their own mercy. That comes from the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 8. Hello. Name of this channel is Accountable KJV. I am of the Church of God, or the Church of the Living God, which is the ground and pillar of truth, inaccurately referred to as Christians. I adhere and believe in the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. I believe, preach and teach, that the authorized version is perfect and errant, given by inspiration word of God. It is the authorized version of the scriptures that you begin as your base text to translate into other languages, into other tongues. You will not hear from my lips except when to refute the use of the word. You will not hear me use the term Christian. Because when you look into the scriptures, the term Christian is a derogatory term labeled upon the church of God by the lost people. Okay? You will not hear me use the word Bible. Because the scriptures does not refer to themselves as the Bible, even though it's written on the back there. It's what's in the text that is important. You will not hear me use that term Bible, except when to speak against it. Now, if you are actually saved, born again, converted, and you persist in using the term Christian or Bible, that's between you and the Lord. But you will not hear me say use those except when to speak against those terms. Words that have meaning, words are important. And to you, dear friend, <laughs> Bible is mark of peace. <laughs> um, I'm here today to plead with you and to show you from the scriptures that these disgusting, vile, putrid, vomitous devils are lying to you and they are leading you straight to hell. See, these devils don't want you to read the scriptures because if you did, you would right away find out that these people are full of malarkey. They're full of dung. They're lying to you. And what's sad is, looking at this channel, Bible is Mark of Beast. This channel has 10,000 subscribers. And you look at the views on this channel, join October 18th, 2010. So in over 10 years, they have 7 million views. That's right on par with some King James Bible believing Christians even. And it's sad. It's very sad. When you and I want to welcome shut you. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I don't want to even hear this putrid man's voice. We are going to watch one of these uh, one of their videos here, and we are going to go through this um, categorically in the scriptures and decimate uh, what these vile putrid devils are deceiving you with. Okay? I'm going to use harsh words because I actually care about you. These people are liars. They're deceiving you. First and foremost, Bible is mark of beast. Okay? <laughs> what is the mark of the beast? What is the mark of the beast? Uh, I will be reading to you specifically from the authorized version of the scriptures known as the King James Version, okay? If you are a devoted, sad, devoted follower of these devils, I would encourage you to get an authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along. But if you are a devoted disciple of these devils, they have you brainwashed. 
so that you won't search the scriptures to see whether these things are so. So, listen. And may the Lord Jesus Christ, whom I serve, give me clarity, proclamation, annunciation. Okay? Because these people talk of following Jesus. But see, the Jesus that they are talking about is that man of sin, the son of perdition. Inaccurately to refer to as the Antichrist, otherwise known as Satan. These people are Satanists. And the Jesus that they hear, uh, hear from is Satan. Not the Jesus who is given to you in the scriptures. Who is the true God. Okay? So... If you do not want to follow me along, that's on you. Listen. Okay? First of all, what is the mark of the beast? I am reading from Revelation chapter 14. Oh, excuse me. Revelation chapter 13. Verses 16 on to verse 18. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 on to verse 18. And he causeth all, who is the he? That man of sin, the son of perdition, who will be indwelt by Satan himself. Okay? And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28.28 28. How would you know that if you don't read the scriptures? Which these people are against. Hence, these people are my enemies. And if you're, you're deluded by these devils, they're your enemies. Okay? Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding, departing from evil, count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. 666, six, six, the number of the beast, which is translated WWW from ancient Hebrew. WWW, what is that? World Wide Web. Hmm. The mark of the beast is something given to people during what is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. A uh, mark that will enable people to buy or sell, and everybody, except those who uh, refuse it, obviously, will receive it. And if they don't receive it, they won't be able to buy or sell. And see, in receiving this mark of the beast, okay, it damns you to hell. It damns you to hell. So what these devils, devils are saying, they're saying that the scriptures... Damn people to hell. Because um, here's what it says about the mark of the beast, okay? Verse, uh, Revelation 14, verses 9, on to verse 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The Lamb, that's our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, or whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, you see in verse 11 here, it says, And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. This means so-called Christians 
and anyone else during this time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, that will receive the mark of the beast, you go to hell. You go to hell. There's no ifs, ands, or oh, I made an oopsie, you're going to hell. And these people, these scumbags, these pond scum devils, are saying that scriptures will lead you to hell. I'm reading now from 2 Peter, chapter 2. 2 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Yes. And many, like 10,000, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Oh, we're going to refute quite, quite prolifically a lot of what this sick, pond scum, wicked woman has to say. Because this Jezebel harlot, devil woman, seems to be the blah, 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 Jezebel mouthpiece of this disgusting, aberrant ministry. Oh, and to you two devils, I hope, I hope you watch this. Because, you two devils, may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. May the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, foul devils, full of all subtlety and mischief, thou child of the devil. You always pervert the right ways of God. Hmm. Just like your brother, Final Call 07. Hmm. Hmm. Because same spirit. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Look at these pond scum shirt. Ah, I'm surprised that, 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 that do, do they do they even sell? Do they sell those things? Bible words, oh, shush. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked devils. The Lord rebuke you. Uh, yeah, that would be a little too obvious if they were selling those. Yeah. But, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Oh, people. Oh, people. You need to beware. You need to wake up. This is what this video is about. Okay? And skipping a little ahead in the second book of Peter, verses 17 on to verse 19. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of Vanity, because man at his best state is altogether vanity. Okay? They allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. See, those of you who are bamboozled, led astray by these devil twits, you want this. You want to be told. That the Bible is an idol. That the scriptures censor Jesus. It's going to take a miracle from our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself. It's going to take a miracle from him to save some of you who are far gone into this poison. But hopefully this might be a catalyst for some of you to wake you up. Because see... If you were to read the scriptures, the authorized version, 
There is only one scriptures. But there are a plentitude of Bibles. Okay? You check out the channel here, you'll see where I stand. Okay? But see, if you started checking the scriptures, you would realize, you would know, these people are liars. And they're taking uh, as many of you to hell with them as they can. The Lord rebuke you, you filthy, vile woman. And you gutless coward of a so-called man. The Lord rebuke the both of you. Your damnation slumber, uh, slumbereth not. And your damnation is just. See, when people get to a point like this, they're gone. They're gone. These people know the truth enough to tweak it, to distort it, and try to destroy it. These two hell bags, they're doomed for hell. And they take, want to take as many of you as they can with them. Continuing. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. They're promising you liberty. Liberty! We'll set you free! They're children of hell. They're children of the devil. And see... You get a hold of this poison and you fall for it, they make you twofold more the child of hell than they themselves. Beware, friend. Beware. Beware. And also, reading from the book of Jude, see, I'm using the scriptures to refute these heretics. Okay? And they don't want you to read the scriptures. Because like I said... If you did, you would realize they're lying to you. And these and this devil, the scum, devil witch, brings up some true points. But just like Satan mixes truth with error. See? Okay? Jude, verses 17 on to verse 19. You, you call yourselves Holy Ghost people, huh? Okay? All right. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where do you have the words of the apostles? Not all of them, of course. But the, you have the words of the apostles within the scriptures, don't you? The apostle Paul, the apostle Peter, the apostle John. Hmm? James, the Lord's brother. Okay? Where do you have their words? In the scriptures. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves Sensual, sensual. Now, you think of sensual, you think of all provocative, harlot-looking, like this disgusting harlot woman here. Uh, sensual means what? Led by your senses, your feelings. Yes. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, led by their senses. Yeah. God is a spirit. And the time has come that those who worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. And our Lord Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And he also says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? And, and, and right here in verse 19, they be, these be they who separate themselves sensual, led by their senses, their feelings, their emotions, 
having not the Spirit? James chapter 3, just one verse, verse 15. This wisdom that these pond scum devils have descendeth not from above, meaning it's not from heaven, or our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Devilish. Okay? And now John, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many false prophets. Today, someone who prophesies is someone who has the Spirit of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 tells you who the Holy Ghost truly is. The Lord is that Spirit, okay? But those who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians, okay? Someone who is of the church of God, who has God within them, that's what makes you of the church of God, they will speak to you from the spirit that is in them through the scriptures comparing spiritual things with spiritual, okay? And we prophesy today by speaking to you through the spirit from the word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. That's how you prophesy today, okay? Because Old Testament prophets do not exist anymore, okay? That's something that the charismatics are all about. They think they are our Old Testament prophets revealing to them new revelation. Another reason why these pond scum, vomitous, odious devils don't want you in the scriptures, okay? But we are to what? Try, not test. Try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. Hereby know ye every spirit of God. And hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now, this is not a way or means to prove that someone is saved. Okay, because there are devils out there who can ro robotically and mechanically, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is the Lord, can say it with that with ease. It does not mean that they are saved. This is for those who are to test for who? False prophets. Those who are prophesying, those who are speaking to you the word of God. These people aren't speaking to you the word of God. No, they're coming up from a, from their own selves. Satan is their father, okay? And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of anti-Christ, people. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is, is it in the world. Now, for those of you who are duped by this nonsense, this is a warning to you. This is someone coming along, smacking you upside your pretty little head to wake you up to this nonsense. But if you, ah, hook, line, and sinker, going to defend these devils, you're lost. You're lost. So this does not apply to you right here, verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And for those of you who are going to defend and follow and believe that, if you're ignorant, that's another thing. This hopefully will make you no more ignorant. But if you choose not to accept this truth that has been given to you, then you will be willfully ignorant. Hence, you're in a lot of trouble with the Lord. So, but they are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Oh, the world wants...
wants to have a relationship with a Jesus apart from the, the doctrine, the life, the scriptures. Or they'll get a Roman Catholic Bible version such as the New American Standard Version, the New International Version, the, uh, what is it, Na, uh, New Luciferian Translation, the NLT, whatever the multitude of Bible translations there are out there. And see, that's something that these devils attack. They go off of that because, he's like, yes, there are a lot of Bibles out there. And you know what? Those Bibles, you know where they come from? They come from Rome, the Vatican. This, the authorized version of the scriptures, this comes from Syria. This comes from Syria. The, um, the manuscripts that the Bibles are based off of, uh, th those come from Alexandria, Egypt, and they're held in the custody of the Vatican. Okay? Okay? Yeah. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world hear them, because you want to hear that you don't need a Bible. Jean Basha, Final Call 07. Okay? He said he was basically saying the same things that these devils are. You they, you might know the Bible, but you don't know Jesus. And you're gonna see a lot of what this harlot, vomitous scumbag, putrid woman saith. A lot also Jean Bashoff said. And verse 6 here. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And, and also an Old Testament reference here. In Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30 with is exactly what these devils are doing. Okay? Exactly what these devils are doing. Isaiah chapter 30. We want verses 8 on to verse 11. And this is so telling of the generation of the people, of the Christian religious um, environment that we have today. Isaiah 30, verses 8 unto verse 11. Now go. Write it before them in a table and note it in a book. Note it in a book so that they would have it for a reference so that they wouldn't go off of their feelings. Yeah. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So note it in a book, like in the book of Isaiah, so that testimony would be given. And you will hear these devils say, well, this is a book of history. Uh, but you'll also say that the, the Bible, and the Bibles don't, but that the scriptures don't speak. <laughs> and of course, they're saying audibly, but the Lord, in fact, you pond scum, harlot, witch. The Lord does use the scriptures to speak unto those who are his. And you know that all too well. See, again, people, these people know the truth. You have to know a level of the truth in order to be this deceptive. Making these devils that much more dangerous. That this is a rebellious people, Lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You don't want to hear the truth, a lot of you, do you? So you come to scumbags like this, devils like this, who are guiding you straight to hell, smiling while peeing on your back, smiling while eviscerating you with lies. Yeah. Which say to the seer, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. The Bible, <laughs> the Bible is like a beast. <laughs> Bible is an idol. Oh, 
in a way, you know, the Bibles, yeah. But the scriptures? No. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. That's exactly what these people are doing to you people. Okay? And, and also in the New Testament, okay? The New Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We want verses 1 on to verse 3. See, again, I'm using the scriptures to inform you, to warn you. Okay? Something these people won't do. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 3. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the alive, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Where do you get doctrine from? The scriptures. That's where you get doctrine from. Okay? For the time will come hmm, when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And let's read verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. The Lord rebuke you, two devils. I don't want to see anyone go to hell, but you know what? To see a couple of devils like you go to hell, praise the Lord for his righteous judgment upon you. Because when you get to this point, like these two scumbags have gotten to, there's no, they're, they're lost. They're, there's no hope for these two people. But there is hope for you who may see this. Okay. Now, I'm sorry. There are those who are my brethren of the church of God, church of the living God, which is the ground and pillar of truth, who will watch this as well. I have to subject you to this. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Whoa, let's, let's look at this. Yeah. Wow, we see a woman. We see a woman. Hmm. And I didn't I didn't set this up right, so I can't scroll down, unfortunately. But if you were to continue scrolling down, a majority of what you see here is done by this wicked woman. By this foul devil woman. Okay? And about that. And see, this is another reason why these scumbags don't want you. And look at this, the newest. We're going to be talking about Jesus is censored in the Bible. Okay? That's the video. Where, but the Bible is an image of God's word. <laughs> but a majority of these videos, this cowardly little boy man here, her, her husband, who she rules over, this Jezebel, um, he does some of it. But a majority of it is this vile, putrid, puke bag, scumbag, harlot, witch. Okay? A majority of it is, a, of it is her. Um, the scriptures is very plain when it comes to this. Okay? In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 12 on to... Oh, no. Let's read verses 11 on to verse 15 in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? And this right here disqualifies anything here. Okay? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. This woman is teaching. Okay? She is usurping authority over the man. She is doing what is contrary to the scripture. And, of course, because they speak against the scriptures, they call the Bible an idol, and this is this is the scriptures, okay? But uh, they speak against the scriptures. How are you to know that she is doing what is contrary and evil in God's sight? 
because you don't read the scriptures. You don't just, uh, search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Yeah. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And this woman is Jezebel. She is usurping authority over the man. You look up Jezebel in the, the scriptures, okay? And Jezebel was a very evil, vile, disgusting, wicked woman who manipulated her husband just like this woman does. This woman is evil. And she is doing what she ought not. And for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Satan did not go on to Adam. Satan went to Eve because the woman is the weaker vessel. And if Satan wants to, de to destroy a house, yes, Satan can go to a man to destroy the house. But scripturally, uh, the proof and evidence is that he goes to the woman first. Okay? He goes to the woman first. Okay? So Adam was not deceived. That's right. Because Satan went to Eve. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Yeah, and this scumbag woman is drunk on her own power. She's a Jezebel. Okay, and also, okay, that, that ought to be clear enough for you. But, okay, 1 Corinthians, well, I don't believe the scriptures. Well, then you, you're in a whole world of hell, dear friend. And, okay, you, you don't want to believe what uh, the scriptures are telling you? Turn the video off right now and go away. Turn off the video right now, go away, and go do whatever you got to do. Because it's better for you not to hear this and to reject it than to hear it and reject it. It'll be worse for you. Okay? Make your choice now because we're going oh, it's going to get more better. Okay? We go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And a brother of mine maybe also doing another video about women preachers. <laughs> uh, if he does, it'll be either in the description box of this or pinned in the comment section, okay? First Corinthians chapter 14, we want... Uh, let's start at verse 33 on to verse 38. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. God is not the author of confusion. You got a devil woman here preaching, teaching? Uh, yeah, that's confusion. It's wickedness. Okay? Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet, or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Wait a minute. So, the Lord's commandments are written for us? Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the Ten Commandments, he wrote them himself. Granted, uh, Moses, because he was mad at the children of Israel, smashed them, yes, but he wrote them again. So, yeah. this concept of God writing a record so people will have it. Hmm. 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 Okay. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. You don't want to hear this. This is on your head. But if you make it through this whole video, <laughs> your blood's on your own head. Okay. And also too, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. 
I don't even know what this devil witch's name is, and I don't care, and I don't want to know. Okay? But, Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 23. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Look, look at this Look at this woman. Holy Ghost dreams and visions. <laughs> the call to fast. Bible proselytes getting free. Promising you liberty while they themselves are the servants of corruption. Yeah. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Fornication is relations outside of the marriage bed before marriage. But there are other kinds of fornication besides physical. There is spiritual fornication. You're fornicating with devils if you're falling for this nonsense. Okay? And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Now, for those of you who follow these people, who believe them, if you're ignorant and you've just you're you've newly come to Christ and you come across this scum and they are bewitching you, and you didn't hear this, and you actually uh, are looking at this, it's like, oh, whoa, wait a minute here. Uh, you are ignorant. But if you're going to fight to the death, tooth and nail to defend these people, you're lost. You're not saved. And you're going to share in these people's damnation, which is just. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. Her children. Her children. Are you being taught and instructed and learning from this woman? So that makes her your spiritual Mother, oh, God forbid. I will kill her children with death. Because you're dead in your trespasses and sins. If you were truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, the Lord who is that spirit dwelling within you, he would be, uh, hey, get away from these. These people do not speak for me. They are devil. The God of the scriptures who dwells within those who are truly saved would be screaming at you, bonking you on your thick head to get away from this. Yes, those who are truly saved can fall for error for a time, but the Lord who dwells within them will chasten them. You're in danger, dear friend. You are in grave danger if you are following these people and being led along, being taught by these devils, these scumbags. You are in grave danger. For the wages of sin is death. You need to consider these things. And I will kill her children with death. Those, that's those of you who are being discipled by these devils. And all the churches shall know that I am he, which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, bear, bear with me here. Um, we have to... Um, brethren, this, obviously this video is not for you. Sorry to subject you to this. Let's let's give this old harlot a listen to. Okay, shall we? This odd method can get rid of, of cold course. sores forever. If you are of tired course. of random and outbreaks on your lips that burn, itch, and bliss. Jesus is censored by the Bible. I know it sounds crazy, but people... You You're crazy. ...use the Bible to speak for Jesus, and they don't let him speak today. Jesus used to speak through his apostle, and then he spoke to his other disciples throughout history. But Satan couldn't stand for Jesus to speak because... Okay, okay, all right. Uh, Jesus is censored by the Bible, and um, 
Satan doesn't want Jesus to speak. And she mentioned about how he used to speak uh, through his apostles and stuff like that. Um, Psalm 138, okay? Psalm 138. Uh, woman, you happen to see this? You're scum, you're a devil, and may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, and you deserve the judgment that's coming upon your head, you vile, vomitous pig. Okay? <laughs> and for those of you who might, I can't believe you're saying that. Um, no one else is going to tell you this. Psalm 138. Okay? Psalm 138. Okay? Psalm 138. We want verses 1 and 2 in Psalm 138. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Magnified thy word above all thy name. What does that mean? That means that our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, has staked everything on this. Okay? He holds his word in high regard. You can you can go to the bank by what the scriptures say of our Lord Jesus Christ and how our Lord speaks to us through the scriptures. He is what does it say? For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. And you might be saying, well, that the word is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in the authorized version of the scriptures. There is only seven appearances of a capital W word, and that is actually talking about our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Right here, the, thy word above all thy name, it's talking about the written word, the scriptures. Okay? He has, a, he has staked his whole reputation on the scriptures. Why do you think the Vatican and all the devils are work so feverishly to pervert the scriptures by giving you a bunch of Bibles? Hmm? Hmm? He has magnified his word above all thy name. And also, too, in Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Matthew chapter 24. Just one verse. Just one verse in Matthew chapter 24. Verse 35. And this is our Lord Jesus Christ himself speaking. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Words. Where are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ? Right here in the scriptures. His words will not pass away. He will preserve them. He will keep them, the words. Okay? Oh, and while I mention that, very quickly, uh, part not part of the notes that I made for this, um, Psalm, <laughs> Psalm 12, Psalm 12, verses 6 on to verse 8 in Psalm 12. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The them that is being spoken of are the words. The words of our Lord. The words of God. And they're found in the authorized version of the scriptures. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay? Verse 8 in Psalm 12. The wicked walk on every side while the vilest men or women are exalted. Okay? All right? And also, I've, I've, I've already made reference to this. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? All right? And what is truth? Well, Jesus Christ is truth, yes. But John chapter 17 Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
Thy word is truth. Okay? And this this scumbag here, we're not even in a couple seconds within this, and there's already so much to go off of. She said, what? What? Okay. Uh, okay. Well, what, let's, let's play this back again. Okay. He loses. Okay. Jesus is censored by the Bible. I know it sounds crazy. You're crazy. But people use the Bible to speak for Jesus, and they don't let him speak today. Jesus used to speak through his apostle, and then he spoke to his other disciples throughout history. But Satan couldn't stand for Jesus to speak because he loses when Jesus speaks. And therefore, they censor Jesus with the Bible. There's a... Therefore, they censor Jesus with the Bible. Now, what she said is true, that when Jesus speaks, Satan loses. Absolutely. But now go to Matthew chapter 4. How? <laughs> oh, woman. Oh, woman. May the fires of hell burn that pretty little hair of yours. And that disgust... Oh, you're a disgusting woman. You're disgusting. The Lord rebuke you. How did our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, how did he handle Satan? How did he handle Satan? Okay. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came, that's Satan, to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. How did Jesus answer that? But he answered and said, It is written. You know, in the scriptures, you will find many places where our Lord says, it is written, or it is written in the scriptures. Our Lord Jesus Christ quoted the scriptures, the written word of God. See, at this time, they had the Old Testament canon. Yes, they did. And we'll, we'll address that here in a little bit, uh, going on with this devil pond scum woman here. But what's important to note is, Jesus himself, Jesus himself quoted scripture. You don't know that, do you? Because you're believing the lies of this putrid, puke bag, scum, devil woman, aren't you? And her cowardly, stoneless husband. You dear man or woman. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. This came from the mouth of God. Yes, God used man's hand to pen it. But it is inspired, given by inspiration of God himself. He breathed life into the scriptures. The scriptures are alive. It's not a dead book. Dear friend, you are being greatly deceived. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written. See, Satan himself can quote scripture, taking it out of context and using it to tempt the, the Lord. He shall give his angels charge concerning, concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, again, the Lord quoting scripture. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What do you do with this, you sicko? <laughs> yeah. Again, the, te the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. 
Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So you see, dear, dear friend, our Lord Jesus Christ himself quoted scripture. Not only did he quote scripture, but he quoted scripture when doing battle with the devil. Hmm? Jesus speaks today. Yes, he does. Through the scriptures. Okay? The spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord is the one who guides you into all truth. If you're a devoted follower of disciple of these devils, you're not saved. That spirit that is in you is a spirit of that anti of antichrist. Okay? Spirit of this world. You're in great danger, my friend. And also, go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verses 12 and 13. <clears throat> Another incident where our Lord quotes scripture. And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first and restoreth all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught? But I say unto you that Elias indeed is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed as it is written of him. So he was making reference of the scriptures himself right there again. Okay? This, this woman is lying to you. The scriptures don't silence Jesus. Jesus speaks through the scriptures, the completed canon of scripture. But, uh, but where does all this stem from? I'll show you. Genesis chapter 3. We, we, we read about how the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay? Woman, you're ugly. And it's because it's from what's on the inside of you. You're a wicked devil. The Lord rebuke you. But Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5, the brethren of the church of the living God already know this, but you're falling for this. I'm going to, I'm speaking to you as if you don't. Okay? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman... Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yea, hath God said. So the first recorded incident of Satan speaking, Satan, the serpent, Lucifer, the old uh, serpent, the devil, dragon, whatever you want to call him, okay? First recorded incident of him in scripture is what? Yea, hath God said, questioning what God has said. Just like her brother, Final Call 07, Jean Boshoff, who is in hell burning right now. Okay? Okay? But the first thing Satan did was question what God said. A woman questioning what God has said. Oh, gee. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Wait a minute! Neither shall you touch it. You look across the page to Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Our Lord speaking here. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God didn't say, God didn't say, neither shall you touch it. Eve added unto what God had said. Add not thou unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Hmm. Liar, liar. Hairdo on fire. Mm hmm. And of course, what does Satan do? And the serpent said unto the woman, Oh, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
You're your own judge. You you don't don't be bound to the book, to the scriptures. No, but be led by that spirit. And God is a spirit. And how are you to discern what spirit you are listening to unless you search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, whether you search the scriptures to see what that spirit that is supposedly guiding you uh, is going against the scriptures. Because, and even this scum harlot says in this video, uh, mocks the church of the living God when we say, yes, Jesus will not contradict his word. She mocks that. She mocks that. Okay? Okay? So, let, let's continue. I'm sorry, brethren, by the way, to subject you. And if you were to look in the comment section of this, that's why I have very little hope for those who may see this video. But you never know. Let's continue. Church, a well known church, a denomination that says where the Bible speaks, we speak. And where the Bible remains silent, we remain silent. Well, the Bible. She's making reference on to Mystery of Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth, which is Roman Catholicism, Satan's Church. See, she's telling truth there. The Bible doesn't speak. It's just a, some of the recorded history of what some of God's people did and said. And it's been tampered with. It's been deliberately interpolated, mistranslated misinterpreted by the people that compiled it into an idol in the first place. Now that's true. That is true. She is, number one, making reference on to Roman Catholicism. And yes, she is speaking truth to you about all the multitude of uh, Bible versions out there. Yes, she is. But see, she said something here that we have to address, okay? Some of the recorded history okay. of what some of God's people did and said a denomination that says where the Bible speaks we speak and where the Bible remains silent we remain silent well the Bible doesn't speak it's just a the Bible doesn't speak now the scriptures itself do not say hello blah blah no the scriptures do not audibly speak like that but God who is the Holy Ghost our Lord is the Spirit comparing spiritual things with spiritual God, the Spirit of God that is within you will guide you into all truth because the authorized version of the Scriptures is a spiritual book. So the Spirit within you will make this a spiritual book come alive and speak to you. And on that, John chapter 19. John chapter 19. John chapter 19, verses 35 on to verse 37. Okay? John chapter 19, verses 35 on to verse 37. Scriptures don't speak. Well, like I said, yes, the scriptures are not going, hi, hi, hi. No, they're not. But the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit who dwells within you, comparing spiritual things, the Spirit of God that dwells within you, with spiritual things, the authorized version of the uh, scriptures, will speak to you through the scriptures. Hence, this is a living book. Hence, the scriptures will speak. She, see, she knows this. She knows this. She knows this. See, they have to know this level of truth in order to pervert it. These people are dangerous. But, uh, John chapter 19, verses 35 on to verse 37. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. What record is that? The recorded record of the scriptures, okay? And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith. Scripture saith, hmm, they shall look on him whom they pierce. Hmm. hmm. And, and very quickly, very quickly, John chapter 7, just one verse, verse 38. Um, uh, John chapter 7, verse 38, our Lord speaking, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, because it's a living book. 
It's not a dead book. The scriptures are alive and they are made alive by the Spirit of God, which is in the believer who is truly saved, born again, converted. Hence, the scriptures. Not a Bible. I agree with that. The scriptures, the authorized version, the King James Version. The Lord that is within you will make this come alive and it will speak to you because he will speak to you through the word. See, okay? He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. <laughs> and the, uh, the water that's coming out of this putrid scumbag witch is water from the Chicago River. <laughs> and if any of you from Illinois know about the Chicago River, <laughs> okay? Okay? And also, let's go to John chapter 20, thank you, Lord, verses 6 on to verse 10, okay? John chapter uh, 20, verses 6 on to verse 10. Then cometh Shimon Peter following him, and went in into the sepulcher, and see if the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that, that he must raise from the dead. Then the disciples went away again onto their own home. Hmm. Hmm. Know the scriptures. They didn't know the scriptures yet. Hmm. And another another point point on this about the scripture speaking. Um, Romans chapter ten. Romans chapter ten. There are actually quite a few incidences we could go to to refute that the you know that the scriptures don't speak. Okay. Yeah, the Bibles don't. Uh, the scriptures do. Okay. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 on to verse 11. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, is that the scriptures? No. No, but the spirit of God who is in you will make the scripture speak to you. Not audibly, but he will bring the script. If you want to hear God speaking audibly to you, read out, read out loud. Okay? That's good advice. And that even, uh, some Calvinists even say that. Calvinists. Oh, we won't get about that. Calvinists. But, uh, y yeah. The scripture saith. The scripture saith. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Hmm. And then a Rom Romans chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? I say then. Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So, see, the scripture does speak. But see, what makes the scripture speak is the Lord that dwells within you, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And that, dear friend, we go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 2, <laughs> verses 13 and 14. 
Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, which is earthly, sensual, devilish, which this scumbag harlot is doing, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things, the Lord and the, uh, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit that dwells within the saved believer with spiritual, the book, okay? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They don't have the Spirit. They don't have the Spirit. And also, in Romans chapter 15, uh, a, a very, very, very good portion of Scripture um, to remind those who are truly saved that we are to be in the Scriptures all the time, as much as possible. Romans chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 4. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Mm. Oh, dear friend. Oh, oh, dear friend. And, and we're not done on this yet by a long shot, okay? We're, see, we're not even a whole minute into this thing yet. And there's already so much to rebuke and refute. Uh, Luke chapter 24. Okay, one of these types of arguments that these people like to bring up is that, you know, Jesus, you know, number one, Jesus didn't use a Bible or Jesus didn't use the scriptures. Uh, he quoted scriptures. He quoted the scriptures. Okay. And the scriptures are important. So important that in Luke chapter 24, verses 25 on to verse 27, on the road to Emmaus, when he appeared to a couple of guys, and he hid, and their eyes were holding that they wouldn't know, couldn't know that it was Jesus speaking to them. Verses 25 on to verse 27. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And this scumbag says that the scriptures censor the prophets. Oh, woman. May there be, and I, I'm hesitant to say this, but you're, you're gone. You, you can't be saved. You've made your choice. This level of deception, you've made your choice. I, I hope there's a nice, cozy place in hell for you. I really do. You and your stupid husband. Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Oh, and there's more. Oh, there's more. Let's go to verses 44 on to verse 48. Okay. Jean Bashoff died and went to hell. These, his brethren, have taken up the fight where Jean Bashoff has left off. Okay, Luke 24, verses 44 on to verse 48. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, the canon of Scripture. Okay? The <laughs> See, you people, you dear people who are... Bewitched by this devil, by this harlot, and by her puke husband. Oh, you dear people. Oh. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. God doesn't save you to be led by your feelings and emotions. God forbid. God forbid. No. But the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. The Lord is that spirit, and he will guide you to the scriptures. And he said unto them, thus it, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, 
and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. And of course, if, if that's, uh, uh, we're beating a dead horse. Yes, we are. We're beating this horse to death. Yes, we are. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Does it offend you that I'm calling her a scumbag? She is guiding you to hell. Her and her husband. These people are devils. They, they cannot be saved. They know too much truth. And speak against it to be saved. They, these people, brethren, Church of the Living God, these are an example of those who are way gone past that point of no return. You're looking at them right here, okay? But 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 on to verse 17. And this is even in the comment section of this video. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Timothy was brought up in the Scriptures by his mother and grandmother, yes. Yes, but he was brought up in the Scriptures. Okay? Yes. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So wait a second. The scriptures are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus? Wow. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for number one, doctrine. Where do you get doctrine? It says it's profitable. It doesn't say that it's needful. <laughs> Yeah, so it's profitable. But see, if you are not within the scriptures, you are not profitable to begin with. You are being led by what? Your emotions, your senses. Okay? Okay? Nice try. And is profitable for doctrine, for rebuke, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. Not sinlessly perfect. Perfect as relation with him. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, if you're not in the scriptures, you won't know doctrine. You will have no reproof. You will not be corrected. You'll have no instruction in righteousness. And you will be not thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? What about those who don't have the scriptures? Well, the Lord is mighty and merciful and can do things above what we think. Someone who has knowledge of the scriptures, who knows the Lord and has uh, knowledge of the scriptures, the scriptures themselves will be there to feed these people, okay? Like in Africa and stuff like that, okay? God is not absent-minded to not send shepherds out there to feed his flock, okay? This devil, this wolf, this, uh, to, to, to borrow a quote from someone who I don't really respect, this isn't a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is a wolf in wolf's clothing. Okay? Wow. Wow. And Galatians, while we're on this uh, thing here, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Verse 30, just one verse in Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verse 30. Here's another. There's another thing. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. And this woman is bringing you people into bondage. Let's continue with this. Here some of the recorded history of what some of God's people did and said, and it's been tampered with. It's been deliberately interpolated, that mistranslated, misinterpreted by the people that compiled it into an idol in the first place. 
And again, she is talking about Roman Catholicism, and that is true. But we already read in Psalm chapter 12, uh, and uh, Psalm 12, Psalms don't have chapters. See, I'm fallible. But he will preserve them. Uh, Roman Catholicism has preserved nothing but the teachings of Satan, by the way. Okay? And um, well, let's continue. Jesus is censored. I know it sounds crazy, but you Holy Ghost people, you know what I'm telling you is the truth. Most Bible proselytes and Bible worshipers, they say that Jesus will never speak anything that the Bible does not bear witness of and that's not in the Bible. Well, you know what? Back in those days, they had a completely different life than we do today. That's true. We know that the passions of men are the same That's and the true. nature of mankind is the same. That's true. But they lived in a completely different world than we do today. Knowledge is in. Uh, there is nothing new under the sun. Though we have all this technology and stuff, there's still nothing new under the sun. Okay. And she's right now saying, quoting from Daniel chapter 12. Uh, here, let me let me go back a little. Okay. You know that the passions of men are the same and the nature of mankind is the same, but they lived in a completely different world than we do today. Knowledge has increased mm -hmm. and they didn't even know all this Bible doctrine that you guys have. And they didn't have all the devices and vices that you have today. Even then they were led by the spirit. They didn't have. A okay. Now she's quoting uh, Daniel chapter 12 um, verses 1 under verse 4 about saying how knowledge will increase and people uh, yes knowledge are, is increasing but there is a famine in the land okay people are not hearing the Word of God okay the Word of God meaning the authorized version of the scriptures uh, Daniel chapter 12 Daniel chapter 12 see she even right there quotes a little bit of uh, scripture herself yeah, if these people really stuck to their guns, they wouldn't utter one word from the scriptures. And she just did. Okay? Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 4. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, Every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Yes, and professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. And when people start professing themselves to be wise, thinking that they know better, or man is more enlightened, blah, 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 blah. Uh, go to Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8, <clears throat> verses um, oh, 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. Where do you hear the words of the Lord? From the scriptures. Okay? And in church buildings? And amen. Church buildings are satanic. Amen. See, she blends some truth with a whole lot of heresy. Okay. Yes, church buildings are evil. Okay. In church building, that's where people are going to worship that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay. Absolutely. But, and the, the fulfillment of this will be in later times, latter times. But for us today, like she, she will even make a mention of. Oh, there are a lot of Bibles out there. Which one? There's only one. The authorized version of the scriptures. Here. You want the perfect word of God? Here it is. The authorized version of the scriptures. With all the these and the thous. Okay? But see, the Christians today. There is a famine in the land of hearing the words of God. Why? Because they read from the message. 
the NIV, the NASB, John MacArthur's Living Standard Bible, and so on and so forth. Yes, knowledge is increasing. Professing themselves to be wise, they have become fools. Yes. Verse 12, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Because which one is the word of God, right? The authorized version of the scriptures. The King James Version, okay? All right? Uh, let's, get, let's listen to this little harlot speak a little bit more. The Bible as we know it today. So the Spirit would speak to him. The apostles would teach him they to didn't be have led the by Bible the Spirit. As we know it to today. Be, this is true. said that you would know God. God said he would pour out his Spirit in the last days. His sons and his daughters would prophesy. So in the first church, they were... Okay. Did they have, as we have today, the completed set of Scripture? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. But they had the Old Testament Scriptures. Okay. They had the Old Testament scriptures. Okay, so uh, even back back then, they weren't being just led along by something without having nothing to reference. Okay, nothing like that at all. Okay, not it wasn't like that at all. Yes, back then they didn't have what we have today, but they still had the scriptures. They had. Moses, they had the prophets, they had the Psalms, they had the history books. They had the uh, Old Testament canon of scripture back then, okay? They had something, okay? Because, okay, uh, here, here's a little argument for you right here. Um, Acts chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, okay? Okay, she said they didn't have what we had. True, they didn't have the completed canon like we have today. That is true. But she's saying that they didn't even have the Old Testament scriptures. That they didn't use. Acts chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was the synagogue of the Jews. Look at this. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days reason with them out of the scriptures. So they didn't have all this doctrine and blah, blah, blah. No, no, They had the Old Testament scriptures. Okay. Alleging out of the scriptures. What was Paul using? The Old Testament. Okay. Okay. All right. And verse 3. Opening and alleging that Christ must have must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Okay? And Acts chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 4. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Corinth, yeah. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius. Lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Okay? How is he doing that? Well, we just saw in Acts chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 3, he did that through the scriptures. Okay? He was doing that through the scriptures. All right? But here's, here's, a, here's a really big warning for you people to, to keep in mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And this is what these people are. Right here. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11. We want verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? 
Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. Bear with me, please. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds <laughs> should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ, which this scumbag devil witch is doing. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, she's preaching another Jesus. Or if ye receive another spirit which we have not which ye have not received, another spirit, that spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of the world, okay? Or another gospel which ye have not accepted. They're preaching another gospel. Ye might well bear with him. Why? Because man is so enlightened nowadays. This, these people are preaching another Jesus, another gospel. Okay? Okay? And you gotta remember too, okay? First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And that is, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to your feelings. No, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Okay? Okay? So let's, let's, let's let this little harlot continue. Come on. Were led by the living Jesus Christ, who spoke to them by the Holy Spirit. Let the church hear what the Spirit says to the church. Jesus would speak to them through apostles, through the Holy Spirit yes. directly, people that had the Holy Spirit in them. But today, Satan killed off all the people that had the Holy Spirit that were speaking the truth. He killed them all. Uh, no! No, you devil scum! Hi, I'm here. So are several of the brethren here. <laughs> See, what she's talking about is, in the book of Acts, um, it was to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. The Greek is a, a Greek is a Gentile, okay? And at the beginning part of the book of Acts, they were doing signs and wonders for the Greeks, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, okay? And at that time, yes, the Lord was speaking through his apostles, through the prophets who would prophesy and stuff like that, speaking the truth unto people from the scriptures and what the Lord would reveal to them. But that was the very beginning part of the church, the church of the living God, this dispensation, okay? But, okay, what happened? The apostles who were sent out to preach the gospel, the sign gifts, the signs and wonders that they were allowed to do died off because Israel rejected the gospel. Okay? So yes, at the first, but see, what they said, as God guided them, they wrote down and passed on from generation to generation, and we have it today in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? So see, she is taking some, telling some truth. Yes. Yes. The apostles and stuff like that. Yes. They were guided by the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. But see, it was God's intention as it is written, as it is written, as it is written for us to have a record to go to. Okay. Okay. Very, very wicked here. Let's continue off using the book because the book people are the ones that did all the killing and the torturing the burning she's talking the about state, roman catholicism slandering people and hanging them and all that the roman devil catholicism. uses the book to kill off the holy spirit people it's an insane thing that people do yeah now see she's talking about see right there what she is doing is evil too okay she is telling you she is she is making reference to roman catholicism 
making you to believe blending in Roman Catholicism is Christianity. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Yes. Roman Catholics are Christian. I'm not a Christian. Okay? I'm not a Christian. Very subtle. Very slick. See, she's telling you the truth about the Roman Catholic Church and making you to hate Roman Catholicism as you should. Amen. But see, she's doing it in such a way that someone such as the Church of the Living God, which I am a part of, when we come to you with the truth from the Scripture, because of what she's telling you, she's trying to confuse you with that we belong to Catholicism and we do not. Okay? We do not. Very subtle. Very slick. Very slick. And it's understandable because you didn't know. You were deceived. But when you hear the truth, you ought to believe it and not fight against it and blaspheme it and say it's a devil speaking to you. That's blasphemy. You're really getting in trouble doing this by not coming to the living Jesus Christ. Another thing that they like to say is um, Bible worshipers say, Jesus will never speak anything to you that's not in the Bible. And that's not true because we have so many more things than they had in the Bible. And in those days, he would tell Philip, join yourself to that chariot. He would tell Paul, go to Macedonia. He would tell Peter where to go and the people what to do. They didn't all just read a scripture and, and go do what it, the scripture said. They did what the living Jesus Christ told them to do. And then... Because that was the beginning of this dispensation and the gospel was first being spread out. Okay? She's deceiving you. Yes, they were the apostles, apostolos, apostolos sent ones okay they were sent out the forefront to spread the gospel to preach the gospel okay yes yes see that is true that is true that you know join thyself to this chariot yes that was yes but that was the beginning of the preaching of the gospel okay that was the beginning of it okay yes, that was the beginning of it Another thing they love to say, they censor Jesus. Jesus isn't allowed to speak because, oh, he would not say anything. He speaks to you through the Bible. Yes, they say, does. how the would scriptures. we even know about Jesus or his will if it's not for the Bible? Well, you might know about Jesus from the Bible, and you might know a lot about what to do and what not to do, but you don't do it. You sin all the time. You don't. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming that she's talking about you don't sin anymore, just like her brother, John Boshoff, who is in hell right now. But see, what she's alluding to is John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. Okay? And this is something that her brother, John Boshoff, who is in hell, that scumbag devil, uh, this is something that he also uh, referenced. John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think that for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. See right there, Jesus is saying the scriptures testify of him of him. Yes, they do. Okay? So right there, okay, but let's continue. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. See these people, the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees, whom he was rebuking, they would read the scriptures mechanically, but they didn't believe what the scriptures said. If they believed what the scriptures said, they would have truly have been Abraham's seed. Even though they were physically Abraham's children, they were not his seed in that they rejected their Messiah. Okay? But, they thought that in actually reading the scripture, scriptures without believing what they said, hence reading it mechanically, hence just reading it as a book, not as the living words of God. Okay? Okay? That's the difference. Because I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you, if you love God, you would love his word. Because these are his words. And his words are life. Okay? I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him will ye receive. Like this. How can ye believe? 
which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Now pay attention. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses. Was Moses there speaking to them right then and there? Huh? No. How could they have believed Moses? Through the scriptures. Okay? So, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Okay? He wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So, you see, our Lord in truth is actually uplifting the scriptures because the scriptures speak about him and tell us, show us the way to salvation and faith and uh, grace and how to walk daily according to the scriptures. Okay? But if you are going to read the scriptures without believing what they say or believing that they are inspired of God, then yes, you are going to be exactly that someone who reads them mechanically. The love of God is not in you. Absolutely. 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 Uh, John 5, verses 39 on verse, uh, verse 47. Um, John Bashoff would just read um, verses 39 and verse 40 and not expound the rest of it onto you. Okay? Kind of like what she's doing. He's actually uplifting the scriptures. Okay? He has exalted his word above his own name. His reputation. His life is written in here for us to learn from. Okay? Okay? And of course, uh, another argument that these uh, a devil like this will bring up, well, not everything that Jesus said is in the scriptures. Yeah, I, 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 I know that. I know that, you, you idiot. Um, John... Chapter 21. John chapter 21. Okay? John chapter 21. John even says the same thing. John chapter 21, verse 25. Uh, let's read verses 24 on to verse 25. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. So yes, uh, talking about other things he did, but also we do not have every single solitary word that Jesus said. Of course not. No, I mean, we don't. But we have what is pertinent unto our salvation and godly living. Okay? That's what is important. Okay? And 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Verse 13. Okay? <laughs> These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. <laughs> okay? And, and, and looking up, um, and looking up here a little bit, um, <clears throat> looking up here a, a little bit, um, verse 9 and 10, in uh, 1 John chapter 5, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness of witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Where is that record? Right here. You don't believe the record that God gave of Jesus Christ? The record is the authorized version of the Scriptures. Okay? Let's continue. 
have the regeneration in you, the nature of God in you to keep from doing those things. And it can't tell you where to go, who to marry. And like I said, I would, I would lay you, I, I'm not a betting man, but I would lay you odds. This woman preaches, this scumbag harlot preaches uh, sinless perfection. I would bet you she does. It's, it, it goes natural with these types of devils. What, and he doesn't give you the power to do it. So knowing about Jesus is not knowing him. And besides that, how did the first apostles and everybody know him? How did the ones that came after him that didn't know him after the flesh, how did they know? Well, Jesus. How did they know? Oh, how did they know? Oh, well, well, by a feeling, by an experience, right? No, 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 no. Uh, by the way, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 20. Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 20. Okay. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Jesus Christ is talking to John, the last of the apostles, revealing to him the book of Revelation. Look what Jesus tells him to do. Right! The things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Write! Write it down as a record so that future generations, people, would have the Word of God! Huh. Oh, these, these devils really irritate me. If you're saved, born again in the church of the living God, these people irritate you too. Okay? So Jesus told John to write. Huh. Interesting. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks, candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Okay? Now, she's saying, how did they, how did they uh, know about Jesus after the apostles, after the disciples. Well, let's look. Uh, Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Okay. Um, you know, within the New Testament, the Pauline epistles, the epistle of John, the epistles of Peter, and so on and so forth. Okay. How did... did, did See, she's telling you to just go by your feelings, to be led by a spirit that you can't identify which is which because you don't search the scriptures to try the spirit whether or not they are of God. So you are going to be led by a spirit that you cannot identify because you're not in the scriptures. You poor, poor, wretched people. Oh, please repent from these people and get away from them. They're leading you to hell. Colossians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphos, and the church which is in his house. And when this epistle is read among you, cause, it, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye read the epistle from Laodicea. So, Paul was writing these letters, these epistles, for the church, for the brethren, Okay, for exhortation, for doctrine, for comfort, and all that stuff. Okay, so how did they, how, what did this scumbag say? Here, let's. Back Jesus this revealed up. himself to them. He spoke to them. He okay. Knowing about Jesus is not knowing him. And besides that, how did the first apostles and everybody know him? How did the ones that came after him that didn't know him after the flesh, how did they know? Well, Jesus revealed himself to them. He's Okay, how, how did Luke know Jesus without, you know, anything? Huh? How did Luke know them, know of Jesus? Um, by searching and researching. Plus, he followed along with Paul, okay? But how did they, after the disciples, after the apostles, and after the first church, how did they come to believe? How did they come to know the Lord? By the epistles through Scripture, okay? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 
verses 25 and 28. 1 to 28. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So epistles, reading the epistles, uh, Thessalonians, Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, Timothy, those are epistles. And we have them today for us perfectly preserved in the authorized version of the scriptures, people. Okay? And then, oh, oh, we're not done. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 17. Talking about Bible is Mark of Beast. This scumbag devil woman and her scumbag devil husband. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 17. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You dear people who are falling for this. These people are lying to you. These people, this devil whore woman is lying to you and damning you to hell. Please wake up. Please wake up. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Following and believing and doing what this woman says, this is unrighteousness. Okay, If you're ignorant and don't know and you see this, praise the Lord. Uh, there will be a link in the description box. Let us reason together, you and I. Okay, There will be a multitude of links in the description box for you to go over and to see. Okay, But if you are being duped by these people, if you are following these people, this is unrighteousness. This is, this is earthly, sensual, devilish. This is satanic. Okay? And if you are going along, if you are willfully choosing to go for this, God might have given you over to strong delusion that you may believe a lie. Why? Because you don't want to hear the truth. But you want to believe a fable. Dear man, dear woman who may see this, please consider these things. I hope you're offended by the way why I'm calling you. These guys want to take you to hell. They don't care about you. They're lying against, against God and against his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Wake up. Okay? Let's continue this. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Or our epistle! Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Okay? And let's go to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Again, giving precedence to the epistles. To the epistles. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And also verses 17 and 18. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Hmm. So how did they learn? How did they hear of God after the main disciples, after like the first century and whatnot? Through the epistles, which were handed down from believers uh, onto believers, which were copied from copy to copy, from copy to copy. The Holy Ghost was upon these people. 
Okay? Okay? And also, too, while we are at it, go to 2 Peter. Again, 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 1. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before of the holy prophets and of the commandments of our of us the apostles of of the Lord and Savior. <laughs> Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Hmm. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Hmm. And also, uh, uh, verse uh, 16. Uh, 16. Also uh, talking about, uh, let's read verse 15 and 16. And accounting that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in, in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Let's see. This devil and her husband, they're not unlearned. They know way too much truth in order to present this level of heresy to you. Okay? Beware, people. Beware. Please beware, brethren. Friends, beware. Let's finish this spoke to them he led them and guided them how did anyone on this earth know god when they didn't have a bible they love to say in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god well in the beginning was the spirit the spirit was with god and the spirit was god god see what she just did she quoted scripture and twisted scripture um <laughs> this 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 this, this, this uh, people dear people Run away from, okay, what is she quoting to you, okay? Uh, John 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, meaning our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And capital W, Word, which appears seven times in the authorized version of the Scriptures, is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ personally. And she just changed scripture, quoted scripture, and changed it right before your face. Ah! And, okay, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and verse, on to verse 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God the Father. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God moved. Okay? And God said, spoke, let there be light. And there was light. So, in the beginning, God, you got the Spirit, and God speaks. What is this? I'll tell you what this is. This is what is called the Godhead, the Trinity, and I would I would reckon that these people also are anti-Trinitarian. That's good, but they're preaching to you another Jesus entirely. Okay, uh, what is uh, what did we just read in Genesis chapter one verses one and one two and three? Uh, First John chapter five, verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father the capital W Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. How are they one? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? God the Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. The Word made flesh is the body. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? 
All right. Th this, this woman just before you said, yea, hath God said. And granted, they, hey, that, uh, that's but see, she's not even quoting scripture aright. They're liars, people. They're deceivers. God is not a book. There was no Bible in the beginning. You're censoring God. You're censoring Jesus using the Bible. How insane is that? One preacher insane. told Harlan, Harlan stopped by this, him and some other men stopped by this tent meeting. And this preacher was sitting out in front of his tent meeting <laughs> reading the Bible. And Harlan told him, of course, the Bible is an idol. And that preacher stopped for a minute, kind of stunned. And then he said, you can't preach that. Of course, Harlan preached it anyway. But that preacher was right in a way. You can't preach the truth. So your husband's name is Harlan? Rhymes with harlot, what you are? Because they'll cut you off your radio programs. They will run you out of town. They won't let you have your tents up. They arrested him one time in Columbia, South Carolina because... Doesn't she look like she's a, uh, a flower child from the 60s too? Hmm. These, these people are our enemies. I have no respect or love for these people. These people, they are our enemies. Okay? These people are our enemies. These people have made their choice. They're going to hell. Their sole purpose is to attack our Lord Jesus Christ and his word. They are my enemies. I have no love or respect for these people. None. Those of you who are duped and following these people, you are the ones I care about. But her and her husband, no. Here. Hey, lady. Hey, man. That's what I think of you. Okay? Remember, I'm of the church of God. I'm not a Christian. Okay? They said uh, the, the man that had the property next to the tent lot said that one of the stakes of the tent was over on his property line. And so he told him to move it. And Harlan was going to move it. And Jesus said, don't move it. And so they arrested him and put him in jail for that. And the Boy, the phone was ringing and policemen were saying, oh, it's okay, preacher, you know, we're going to get you out of here before you know it. And then finally they got him out, you know, and, and later, about a month or two later, Harlan came back through there and that preacher died of a heart attack on his front lawn. So things didn't work out too good for him fighting against this truth. They were censoring Jesus. They didn't want Jesus' voice to be heard again in the land. But Jesus saying that a guy died for speaking against them. Uh-oh. And I do have a bad heart. Oh, boy. <laughs> if this be the last video I ever make, may one of you repent and get away from these devils. Jesus spoke to Harlan in 1977. He said, my voice will be heard again in the land, and the sons of God will be manifested. In fact, it was this month in 1977, on the 17th of May, when he said, the sons of God will be manifested. And then on the 19th of May, he told him, my voice will be heard again in the land. You know what that means? That means that his voice was not being heard in the land. Only a bunch of Bible people were preaching false doctrines from the Bible, and they were censoring God's Holy Ghost people. They wouldn't let them speak. They wouldn't let us in their churches once they knew what we believed. They would cut us off our, their radio programs. We'd buy radio time, and they would kick us off those once they knew what we said. They wouldn't let us on TV. Jesus is censored. They got his name on all their churches and their buildings, but he's not welcome in there. The book... Now, that's true. That is true. She, uh, again... Uh, a little bit of truth with a little bit of error. Remember, rat poison is 95% good food, only 5% poison. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And yeah, and she's right. The church buildings are satanic. Yes, they have another Jesus in the church buildings. Yes, stay away from the church buildings. They are satanic. They will kill you. They are poison. Yes, yes. But then again, she's preaching another Jesus herself. See. Look about him, the historical Jesus is welcome. But Jesus himself, the living Jesus Christ, is not welcome in there. They hate him. They want a fleshly Jesus. They want the one like these, these money monger and these prophet preachers preach, these televangelists and all these lying Bible thumpers preach because they want to live after the flesh and they want to believe they're going to heaven. Jesus is not... And the spirit that you have, woman, is a devil. 
not welcome to speak in the very churches that bear his name. We're not allowed to speak the living words of the living Christ, but only the dead letter words from 2,000 years ago that have no power today. They've replaced the living Jesus Christ and his living voice with a dead letter book, an image of God's word, an idol that they make to speak, the Bible says. And what would Jesus the do? The Lord rebuke you, Well, they you, make woman. Jesus be the way they want the Jesus Lord rebuke to be you, you because they follow. censor him. They don't want Jesus Thank to tell you, them, you're not in heart. my will. I don't know you. You're not obeying me. You're living after the flesh. You're quoting scriptures. They don't want him to tell them, I didn't want you to go after that money and that house and that woman and that life. I want you to follow me and give up your life after the flesh, just like the young rich man that went away sorrowful because he didn't. He kept all the laws. He was. Uh, why use scripture at all if you're speaking against it? See, I, that that right there. Okay, they're willing to use some of the scripture, but yet call it an idol and say that it's dead. Uh perfect under the law, but he didn't want to do what Jesus told him to do, the living Jesus. He didn't want to give up his flesh. So they censor Jesus. Jesus is censored, and they try to censor us, and they've really made it hard on us. But by the grace of God, his voice is being heard some on social media, although it is censored more Too than many it should people be. Have heard what you really have censored. Woman. But Jesus said his voice would be heard again in the land, and so it is getting out to some of you that love the truth. Thank you, Lord. That, okay, that that that's that's enough. That's enough. That's enough of that. That's enough. <sighs> In Second Corinthians chapter three, we're almost done. In Second Corinthians chapter. 3, Verses 1 on to verse 6. Here's another argument that these people like to bring up. Do we again to do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistles, epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And so, now see right there, it's like, see, these, these types of people will be like, see, see, it's a, a fleshly tables, not with ink. Put the scriptures away. Whoa, 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 time out there, there, happy Jack, okay? And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Here's the big verse that they like to attack. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. So see, the letter kills. Put this way. He's talking about, what is he talking about? I'll tell you what he is talking about. Romans chapter 7, okay? Romans chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 10. He's talking about the law. The letter of the law, okay? He's talking about the law, okay? Written on tables of stone. He's talking about the Ten Commandments. He's talking about the law, Okay? Romans chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 10. But now we are delivered from the, from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Meaning that the Old Testament laws for sacrifices and that kind of stuff, you know, the ordinances within the book of Leviticus and stuff like that were fulfilled with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and plus with the blood that he shed on the cross, okay? The Old Testament was fulfilled in that way. The law was fulfilled in that way, okay? What, that, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. 
But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. You don't know what sin is unless you have the Old Testament law to tell you what sin is. Okay? For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Because you find out what you're doing is sin and evil. And God hates it and speaks against it. Okay? Hence the law. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. How is it ordained unto life? To keep you away from those things that will kill you. But I found to be unto death. Meaning that, number one, what your wicked heart loves, God hates. But number two, you find out, it's like, okay, I'm not supposed to lie, cheat, steal, or do anything like that, but yet I can't control myself. I still do it. See, the letter killeth. Killeth your pride. It killeth your self-righteousness. Okay? It was there to give you life, meaning to keep you away from those things which God clearly notes in the scriptures for you to stay away from. Okay? We talk about this in a video, Oh Wretched Man That I Am, where we go through uh, Romans chapter 7 in its entirety. Okay? Let's continue. Verse, okay, no, no that was it. That was it. Let's read verse 11 and 12. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We don't have to keep it today. Why? Because all the penalties and everything that was contained in the law was fulfilled in Jesus Christ when he paid the penalty for our sin. Okay? And also, too, Galatians chapter 3. See, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 6. Verse 6, specifically, Paul is talking about the law. Okay? The Old Testament law. Not that we don't have a law to Christ today. Okay? About that, you know? Because these devils, like, uh, you just be led by your feelings, right? Uh, right, right. Uh, for today, in this dispensation, not even going to bother. There'll be something for dispensationalism within the description box, Okay? Uh, here are the commandments that we are supposed to keep today as the church of God. In Romans chapter 13, verses 8 on to verse 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, lie, and if you're reading something that isn't the authorized version of the scripture, thou shalt not bear false witnesses and in there. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. 21 on to verse 26. Galatians chapter 3, verses 21 on to verse 26. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But we just read it was ordained to life. Yes, to keep you away from those things that God hates, hence improving the quality of your life. But to give you actual life? No. No, let's continue. But the scripture hath concluded hmm, all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But, be, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Okay? And John chapter 16. John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Our Lord speaking here. How would you know that? Huh? Unless you search the scriptures. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Hmm. We read a little bit more, but, okay? The Spirit of truth, and the Lord is that Spirit, and will guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, dear friend. Okay? Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 6, which I'm sure those pond scum devils will use that the letter killeth. Yeah, so put the scriptures away, just like John Boshoff did. He's talking about the law. Okay? Acts chapter 17. Okay? Acts chapter 17. See, you're supposed to know this. God doesn't save you and lead, let you go wandering aimlessly, being led by a spirit that you can't identify because you don't read the scriptures. Okay? Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether these things, those things were so. Search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. You are admonished to search the scriptures daily whether those things are so, dear friend. Don't believe these lies that you're hearing from those two devils. They're damning you to hell. And 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 13 on to verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Ah, let's just read verses um, 14 on to verse 16. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There will be two there are two videos that will be in the description box talking about rightly dividing, okay? But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Shun profane and vain babblings like this woman and her husband. Get away from these people, people. Get away from these people, dear friends. They're lying to you and they're damning you to hell. And 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Paul and Paul Timothy, as I say unto any of you who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and the living God, till I come give attendance to reading. What is he reading? The scriptures. To exhortation, to doctrine. What you get from reading the scriptures. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the lying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. 
Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. <laughs> See, what these two devils do is, is exactly what is contained in um, Proverbs 30. Just one verse. Proverbs 30, one verse, verse 6. Proverbs 30, verse 6. Verses 5 and 6, excuse me. Hmm. Actually, let's read verses 4 on to verse 6 in Proverbs 30. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. See, those two devils, they're giving you another Jesus. I give you the Jesus of the scriptures, who is the true and living God. Okay? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Of course, the final, one of the final warnings in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 on to the close of the chapter. Okay? For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs> Dear friends, Hmm. Dear, 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 dear friends. Hmm. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one on to verse five. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Through the scriptures, we have refuted just one little part of a video by those horrific rank heretics Bible is mark of beast <laughs> dear friend if you've made it through all of this video till now please consider what you have what you have heard in this video please consider they are giving to you another Jesus, another gospel. They are lying to you and twisting the truth. The scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. This is the word of God. This is the truth. Okay. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God does not save you just so you can be led by a spirit that you cannot identify because you are not searching the scriptures. Beware, dear friend. Beware. And please take these warnings and heed to this. Please take heed to this. And put this warning into your heart and repent. And get away from these people. Because these people are leading you to hell. And if you are going to continue to defend and follow them, your destination is fixed. And those two devils, th there's no hope for those two. Those two know the truth. They know the truth to the point where they can attack it and twist it. They are without excuse. Those two have made their choice and they're damned. So, please take heed to this warning. I love you. Please consider diligently 
what is being said to you and what has been said to you today. There'll be a plentitude of links for you in the description box and maybe in the comment section. Take heed, dear friend. See you in the next video.